With the recent uh, Glastonbury Festival in the UK, I realised that's the perfect opportunity to talk about really exciting chemicals you can get off eBay because the Glastonbury Festival, which is a huge outdoor festival, it's in fields and it major profile bands and it's all covered by TV and radio and quite often it just absolutely hammers down with rain and the people end up wading about mud and you just see the people uh, laughing and throwing themselves in the mud but what actually happens is that the mud gets into their foot footwear and they end up with their feet soaking in mud for several days and this can lead to something called trench foot I'm just going to write trench foot down here and trench foot is when your foot the skin because it's soaked so long in this sort of dirty water um, and mud, it actually lets it penetrate through and your skin gets disrupted and infected. And this also, this if you've got a cut in your feet or you've got sweat rash or anything like that, that uh, is a major contributor as well. So uh, this can also happen with industrial footwear. And the reason it's called trench foot in, foot in the first place, uh, let's uh, spell that trench foot, let's spell that correctly. Uh, the reason it's called trench foot is because it was a major problem during the war with the guys in the trenches, no changes of clothing or footwear. They were just, their feet were just soaked in mud all day long and it resulted in major foot damage. And you can get chemicals. Uh, now, these chemicals like potassium permanganate used to be the sort of thing that you could go to your local chemist and you could buy a little bottle of this and it wasn't that expensive. And I notice a lot of chemists now are not selling little bottles of it because they can sell you much more expensive things that are less effective. They also uh, they did a dosing system whereby you could pay through the nose for a little bottle of tablets and you shouldn't eat this stuff. I'm not sure why they made it in tablet form, but they compressed it into tablets, which was a tiny bit of potassium permanganate with loads of packer and you were supposed to dissolve it in your bath. And you know, that caused problems as well because they didn't dissolve very well. And if you we were treating a kid that had a skin problem and you put it in the bath and the tablet wasn't fully dissolved, it could actually, where the kid's con skin contact, it could get burnt by the, by the concentration of the chemical. Because this is a really strong oxidizer. Uh, you know what? Before we go any further, I'll show you just how strong an oxidizer it is by just cutting to another video here that I've just made so, um, that, so you can actually see just how potent it is. So to demonstrate the reaction between potassium permanganate, uh, how much of an oxidizer it is, um, I've put some in a little tea light holder here and I've added a few drips of just ordinary glycerine. And the glycerine is acting as a fuel and the potassium permanganate is oxidizing it and making it burst into flames with a purple flame, oh, which has melted the aluminium, made a huge mess and created lots of toxic smoke. Uh, I should mention you're not supposed to do this indoors. That just never stops me, does it? So I'm just going to step out the room now and uh, let this smoke clear a bit. So now I've scared the living bejesus out of you by making it look like this is some explosive chemical. Uh, I'd like to point out that, you know, that's a bit of a party trick. The uh, potassium permanganate and glycerin thing, you can actually get kits for lighting campfires that, you know, for extra drama, that you carry it in little separate containers, separate vials, and you can buy that on eBay, in fact, but it's shipped as two separate packages. They don't ship the two together for obvious reasons. However, uh, I used to buy this from the chemist, um, and it came in little glass bottles with a little plastic top, and you, it was the fairly coarse crystals. This fine stuff dissolves a lot easier. And it's fairly safe. If you've got it on its own in a plastic or glass container or a sealed plastic bag, as long as you're not like storing it next to a leaky bottle of glycerine, then nothing major is going to happen. It's, it's perfectly safe. And as I say, this stuff's available on eBay, but I would say buy it now. It's 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 a you know it's a stable chemical. It's going to last in a plastic container or a glass container for a very long time. Uh, they're going to clamp down at some point because they're clamping down on everything. Uh, another of the chemicals I'll be looking at later on is boric acid, which is a very inert chemical, and uh, the European Union is trying to ban boric acid and borax for some odd reason. They're trying to protect us from ourselves for some bizarre reason. Do we need protected from ourselves? Well, occasionally I need protected from myself, but that's a minor technicality. Anyway, the, how to use this? So, supposing you've been out camping or travelling, your feet have somehow, you know, it could affect the military, it could affect revellers at these big outdoor festivals, or it could affect your feet if you're in construction industry and you're just, your feet become infected and it's not pleasant. 
here's what to do so you don't end up in a hospital like I did once. When uh, the feet became infected in stagnant water in a building site, uh, in a basement, it was just hot, humid, clammy, stagnant water. Feet came infected, it just spread over the whole feet and I ended up in intensive care in hospital. That was just not a good time. Anyway, here's what you can do. So, if you're feet infected, you want to get yourself a seat, a nice comfortable seat, and you want to sit in that seat with your legs dangling over the edge, your feet on the floor, just sitting down basically, and get a good deep container. Now, I recommend a plastic mop bucket because it's got a handle uh, that you can use to carry it, and it's deep because uh, that's also useful because it means you can fill a modest amount of water to cover your feet completely uh, with this lovely solution. Uh, but it also helps avoid splash over because if you've got a light coloured carpet it won't be light coloured by the time you've splashed this stuff in it. Potassium permanganate just stains everything brown. It's just uh, it, it's used in um, the television and film industry by wardrobe departments who want to make everything look all old and sippy and stained. They'll often do a wash of potassium permanganate for garments and it just makes everything look old. Uh, so it stains everything, including plastic and um, and your feet, so don't make it too strong either. So you want to get your bucket uh, with that, uh, put a towel underneath it, because you'll be putting your feet in the towel afterwards before, you know, so you can put your feet somewhere once they're soaked. And then you want to get a table, and you want to get a laptop, and you want to, like, start banging on that laptop and uh, having fun on the internet, because that will just make the time fly. You know, that's the best time to soak your feet in potassium permanganate while you're on the internet or watching TV because time flies and you get your feet in a nice warm soak and it, it just, you know, this stuff performs miracles. It, it's, you know, it's a strong oxidizer and you say, well, why can't you just use bleach? And some people say, yes, you can use bleach, but I found bleach irritating my feet and it seems to be very common that happens. But for some odd reason, potassium permanganate used a weak solution doesn't have that irritating effect. And also it seems to, shall we say, permeate the skin a little bit with the sort of metallic salts. And it, it makes them more resilient. Even when you've, you've dried them off, they're resilient to bacteria. And, you know, it continues a healing process. And certainly I've never come across anything that works quite as well as this. So um, I'll demonstrate now how little you need. Because this, a little, goes a very long way. So I'm going to get a, a paper towel. And I'm going to get a bowl of water. And the bowl of water is warm. Because, you know, this stuff, uh, it dissolves a lot better. Particularly if you get the big crystals, you're better dissolving it by adding boiling water into the bowl first and then dissolving it, sloshing it about, and then uh, adding some water to uh, dilute it. But uh, I'm going to show you how, just the, I keep this little stick for measuring it out, it's just a little wooden stick and you just need a tiny tip. Look at that, see, is that much at all? It's just barely anything and then you tip it in and then you get a, a mixing spoon which I've completely forgotten to get. One moment. And you stir it in and you should aim for a light pink colour like this. This is a good colour. Uh, if you keep adding more, it'll gradually get deeper and deeper till it goes virtually purpley black. And that's the point your your feet are going to look very weird. You're going to have big tide marks up your legs. Of, they're going to be thoroughly stained and it could actually be an irritant as well if it could be too oxidising. But, you know, just this light pale colour and uh, this is just a basic... I, I wonder what this tastes like. I'm, I've suddenly got the urge to taste it. This is probably a bad thing. I'm not sure you should really drink. I'm not going to drink it, but I'm going to taste it. Okay, random chemical taste test completed. I do actually need protection from myself at times. That tasted very slightly tart. It tasted dry and tart, much like an oxidizer probably would, but it is super weak, it really is. There was nothing really major happening there. So this is it, look, that's it's just a pale pinky solution. Soak your feet in it and then dry them off afterwards. And literally, if you've eat, no matter how bad your feet are, then after a few days, they just start getting better. It's, it's 
weird. It's this was recommended to me by my doctor. Uh, it was sort of, it was very old school. He tended to recommend the old formulas, the old chemical and the old traditional um, remedies. And this is something that's a uh, this potassium permanganate treatment is endorsed by some fairly significant uh, scholarly groups in the UK uh, to deal with dermal things, things to do with skin. And, uh, you know, it, it seemed they fully endorsed the use of this as a weak solution. And as I say, you know, this this packet off eBay cost a few quid. That that This is enough to last you, God, probably most of your life, the number of times you'll need it. So uh, it's, uh, it's good stuff and leave you tons to actually mix glycerine with and make it burst into flames. Now, here's the next chemical, because, you know... Other things that can happen to your feet, at, your footwear at work is, uh, well, the same thing that happens to athletes. Uh, wet feet will ultimately end up with fungus growths, you know, like uh, athlete's foot. And I struggled with athlete's foot when I was young. Um, and I tried all these things. Mycel comes to mind, this medicated powder called mycel. It, you know, I think it, it actually caused more damage than good. But uh, anyway, this is a uh, boric acid. It's a very, very inert material. It's very, it's not very toxic. I've got a wee shaker here that I use to occasionally just shake some into my footwear, um, and it's a very, you know, they call it an acid. It's boric acid, but when you taste it, mm, there's a second chemical going in. Mm, mm, it doesn't taste like acid at all. If I'd got maybe citric acid and done that, my mouth would all be puckered up with acid. But um, with this, there's no real flavour. And this is why it's kind of used uh, as, it's such such a weak acid that it's used as a sterilisation agent for uh, eye wash solutions. And also it's used in eye drops as a steriliser because it has this really incredible antibacterial and antifungal effect, but is very safe and inert. And if you sprinkle some of this into your footwear, and there's all sorts of weird things on the internet, you know, sprinkle it into your socks and then wear them for 10 days. And it's like, no, don't do that. Uh, but definitely sprinkle some of your socks if you want. You get two forms. You get the crystally form, you get the very fine powder. I prefer the fine powder, but it's much harder to get, so it doesn't really matter. Just get this sort of, you know, this is the sort of texture of sugar, this stuff, sort of fine sugar, caster sugar. But, uh, sprinkle it in your shoes. If you get stinky footwear, sprinkle some in your shoes and see what happens. It's a profound effect because for some reason, although this is such a safe and inert chemical, it kills fungus. And it's used uh, uh, as a wood treatment that a traditional wood treatment would be a glyco, like propylene glyco, with a mixture of boric acid and borax in it uh, to basically create a heavily boronated fluid that uh, soaks well into wood and it, it stops, it kills bugs, it kills... Uh, rot, it kills, you know, it just has this really wide-ranging effect and it's a very natural chemical. Um, so yeah, is there much else to say? These are the two primary chemicals for maintaining your feet if, you know, you've had any issues with them getting wet at work or on leisure pursuits like back to the Glastonbury Festival with, you know, getting muddy fields and your just feet get contaminated because I do recall that there seems to be a space that happens every year when they have these festivals and it's just useful to know that you know you can treat this at home easily with standard chemicals you can buy off eBay but of course uh, just uh, and here comes a disclaimer test small area for allergy etc etc and if in doubt go and see your doctor but yeah other than that cheap chemicals off eBay oh uh, if you know of any other really radical chemicals I should know about, uh, leave comments down below because um, it's always interesting to see uh, what op you know other things are available, and uh, then do the research on Google to actually find out about them. But yeah, uh, two very common chemicals that probably will be banned from eBay at some point in the future, so maybe worth getting some as stock anyway. Oh, I should mention, uh, boric acid. I actually made a video about this before. Uh, if you actually put it in a, a spirit that burns with a sort of blue flame like meth, uh, meth is, uh, methanol, like methylated spirits, uh, you mix some of this into it and light it, it burns a green flame. It's very, very stylish. But yeah, purple flames and green flames, what, what more could you want?